I'm surprised that in the entire United States of America, there are no journalists doing that kind of accountability questioning of the left. We see that of leftist journalists to conservatives and Republicans. But I don't know why we don't yep. see that to the stars of the new left like, like you were doing. Well, I, I, I don't know either. And it's pretty apparent. You can see there's definitely the appetite for this kind of journalism, this sort of candid interview of politicians. It's something that is rarely seen. Uh, of course, the one congresswoman said it was a lack of journalistic ethics or some, something along those lines to ask her questions in the hallway. I, and I'll, I'll tell you an interesting story. So I, I basically waited outside of a committee room where I knew Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and a few other Democrats were going to go to eventually grill Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne Conway, of course, uh, snubbed them as she has every right to do, um, being a part of the administration. Uh, so they, they pretty much adjourned that committee meeting right after they all appeared. So I asked them questions as I came in. They adjourned very quickly. And then uh, the Republicans all left. And I've, of course, I was asking some Republicans questions too, but I was hanging out by the Democrat door uh, and their staffers poked their heads out uh, and poked their heads out, go back in, poked their heads out, go back in. Uh, and then they start sort of filtering out. And everyone except for AOC and Ilhan Omar and Presley, I think, uh, all stayed in the room for, for like half an hour longer than they were supposed to. In fact, they actually delayed the press conference that everyone was watching yesterday. They delayed it by almost half an hour because they were so scared to leave that room and be asked questions by me. Now, of course, the mainstream media was parked outside the room waiting to ask some questions too. But after about 20 minutes, they all packed up and left. They didn't want to wait that long or maybe they had to get to the press conference. I'm not sure why they left. Uh, but I just stayed there. I stayed standing in the corner and I, I sort of hid a little bit so that they would think that I left. And right when I did that, of course, AOC and Ilhan Omar both left together to get into an SUV, which is when you, there's that one video of them getting into that SUV when Ilhan Omar starts laughing. When I asked her if she will tell Americans and Antifa in particular not to be violent towards law enforcement. Here, we'll show a quick clip of that getting into the SUV and then laughing about your terrorism questions. Here, take a look. Will you tell Americans not to be violent anymore? Antifa to be, uh, to be exact. Should Antifa stop being violent? Okay, I'm closing the door. I can't say I'm surprised that the politicians were hiding from me. We've seen that before. We've seen that in Ottawa. We've seen that in Calgary. Rachel Notley delayed an event by an hour to avoid your questioning. I'll always chuckle over that. Um, but I, I have to say, I mean, I've been to Washington, D.C. a number of times, including to meet conservative journalists. Uh, and aside from Fox News, which is very large and powerful, there's smaller conservative news networks. There's OAN, there's The Blaze, uh, which has merged with CRTV. There's the website-based um, media like The Daily Caller, which has a huge office in Washington. Um, like there's just so many conservative journalists, conservative activists. I, I'm truly boggled by the fact that no one just walks up to these congressmen who are very available, it seems to me, and just puts questions to them. I, I don't know. I, I find it unusual that we're doing this from Canada. I love it, of course. I, I think we're making a difference. And I think um, we're growing our U.S. viewership. And of course, Canadians care about those things, too. I'm just scratching my head because I thought they had a more robust media culture down there because of their First Amendment. I just I feel like the conservative media are, are, are sleeping down there. Well, I'll, I'll tell you my experience that I've had here so far. It, it, compared to Canada, it is far more open. It is much easier to get access to politicians here because the press gallery, if, if one exists here, is not, doesn't have the same iron fist as the one in Ottawa does because, of course, the incestuous relationship between the prime minister's office and the press gallery in Canada. Uh, so in Canada, if you go to Parliament Hill to get in, the security officers will say, what are you doing here? Why do you have a camera? Do you have authorization to be in this building? Whereas you go to Congress and you put your backpack through a metal detector and then boom, you're standing 
uh, shoulder to shoulder with Ilhan Omar and Alexander Ocasio Cortez. So that it, it is much easier to do it, which makes me wonder why there aren't more people doing it. I can understand why there's less conservative journalists in Canada, because it's a very hard thing to cover the prime minister when the prime minister doesn't want you to cover him. Justin Trudeau has absolute authority over who can and cannot be in press conferences. Uh, that's not the same here. So I don't know why the Daily Caller uh, doesn't do this. I mean, they have journalists in D.C. Maybe they think that it's too aggressive. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a very, uh, very aggressive individual. Uh, small stature and not very intimidating, I, I like to think. Uh, but, of course, these women, uh, these female, uh, these congresswomen that I was uh, interviewing, they weren't happy that I was doing it. They were uh, probably hoping for more puffball questions like what CNN and, uh, and MSNBC tend to ask them. That's an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a video monologue and then I interview an interesting guest and then I end by reading my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at therebel.media slash shows.